Ali McCoist was the Rangers match winner. Live tonight from the Bells Scottish Premier Division, it's Motherwell, who are rock bottom against the leaders, Rangers. What a difference a year has made to Motherwell. Twelve months ago, they were second, chasing Rangers hard at the top. Now they are on the bottom. Not much changes at Ibrox, though. They're top once again, only by a point, mind, as they chase their eighth consecutive title. Our guest here this evening, Charlie Nicholas. Welcome, Charlie. Nice to Hi see there. you. What, what, uh, everybody's been asking, I know, but what on earth has happened to Motherwell? Oh, it's been a disastrous time they've had. I mean, you see, mid-October since they last had a victory. They just can't score goals, Richard. That's the main problem. They've had Coin and Arnett, the main goal scorers, out with a lot of injury. Worries and they, they just can't score goals. This is how the Bell Scottish Premier looked 12 months ago. Bottom to top. Partick Thistle were in 10th place. Then it was Aberdeen, Kilmarnock, Dundee United, of course, who eventually went down. Hearts, Celtic 5th, struggling at the time. Falkirk Hibs, Motherwell. 32 points from 18, Rangers on top. Now, it's a very different situation. 14 points from 17 games played. That's real trouble, isn't it? That's serious trouble. I think Alec McLeish is a real up-and-coming manager, but last season, as you say, they've done so well. Going to Europe, and this season's just been a real bad time for them. A lot of injury tr troubles, to his credit, but he's, uh, he's stuck with the style that Alec believes in, which is a passing game. And full credit to him for that, but they are in a bit of trouble at the moment. And having lost Dundee United last year, yeah. um, Aberdeen comes so close to going as well. Nobody's too big, it seems, to uh, to go down. There's no divine nope. right to stay in the top flight, nope. is there? That's definitely true. We even had it in England with Notts Forest going mm. down a couple of seasons ago. Mm. There's no such thing as you're too good to go down. Dundee United went down last season. Aberdeen were lucky to stay up. And there's every chance, although it's very early yet, that Motherwell are in that, that predicament of being down there. When you're stuck in it, it's so difficult to get out. Let's, let's turn our minds back to the top. Rangers on top, but yeah. only by a point. Celtic pushing really hard, yeah. but it is very much a two-horse race, isn't it? Very much so. I think Celtic are 13 points ahead of Hibs, something like that. I mean, it really is a two-horse race this season. But if there's one thing for sure, the one team who will and can win the title from Rangers is Celtic. That, that has always been the case. Aberdeen went close on a few occasions, but Celtic really carry the big threat. The big pressure is Celtic. And they're playing ever so well. Does that make it a different psychological game as far as Rangers are oh, concerned? Of course if Celtic does. are breathing down. Of course it does. Celtic are well renowned for finishing well. The last five, six years have started particularly badly. This time of the season, Rangers have got the, the league title wrapped up from Celtic. This is the first time they're putting on a series challenge and they're playing well. Well, this is how much Celtic have turned the heat up. They're unbeaten in their last 13. They've won their last four. Simon Donnelly steadies 
Quickly by Collins. Van Hoydong. Makes a big throw. And bearing in mind, you might just be a little bit biased. How much of a threat are they? No, they're a serious threat now, Richard. There's no doubt about that. They're playing particularly well. Uh, Rangers still have that point in obviously tonight's game to, to face yet, but uh, Celtic are playing particularly well, scoring a lot of goals and exciting to watch. Rangers aren't playing as well, but you just have this belief for Rangers that they keep getting the results. You know, from, I don't think they've lost away from them, neither the Celtic to be honest, but Rangers always seem to get the big big challenge matches, mm. they always seem up for it. Mm. I think the goal scorers chart in Scotland underlines what you're saying about how many goals they are scoring. Van Hoydonk, yep. 11 from 16 games, Collins, 9 from 16, Dennis McCoy of Rangers, Darren Jackson of Hibs, and uh, Keith Wright of Hibs behind him with 7 from 13. But Van Hoydonk scored the vital winner at the weekend. Is he now beginning uh, to, to lay the charge that he doesn't score enough important goals for Celtic? Well, that will only come, I think, towards getting, if Celtic are still going to be in there towards the end, then I think people will say, yeah, Van Hoydonk's doing it. At the moment, the last four weeks ago, Celtic crowd and, and everybody else was starting to pick in Van Hoydonk saying he doesn't get into the areas where he should be getting into to score goals. And he's six foot five, everybody wants him to go and win every header. But he does like the ball into feet, but of late he's been scoring very regular. And, he, he and seems scoring to be, important goals, as we said, scored, the well, Rangers in the old firm match. Exactly, he scored a great goal there, but it's importantly again, on Saturday they didn't play particularly well and he, he comes up with a winner. So that's vital, vital goals. Let's have a look at the latest championship odds. Rangers going for their eighth title, as I said. Firm favourites, five to one on, eleven to four Celtic, and then well, there's nobody else in it, is there? Aberdeen and Hibs, 150 to one, and it's one of the top two then. Oh, without doubt. I mean, it's difficult ever to go against the bookmakers, but mm. even five to one on, and you're only a point in front. You know, it just shows you they still feel Rangers are the strongest. Talking once again in Scotland, I notice of a reconstruction, not for the first time in recent seasons. Why and what sort of reconstruction? It's that time of the year again, Richard, in Scotland. <laughs> Everybody goes through this. Every time we get dumped out of the Champions Cup, or money we don't do particularly well in Europe, then we start about reconstruction and what we're going to do. We get into this strange lull in our game. Uh, we know the game's not perfect up there, but this is a time of year where everybody says the same. We're we going to do away with the 10th Premier in the, at the top and do 16. But I don't really know if we've got enough quality clubs in terms of finance and stadia to actually say we can benefit from 16. But this is a time of the year where we're all starting to talk Certainly about it. get some support from one or two of the strugglers who wouldn't go down, of course, uh, yeah. were there to be a reconstruction. Mm -hmm. But, I, I mean, how serious is it? Is it gathering pace? Well, it seems to be gathering pace, I think. I think the, uh, the supporters from who are watching this stuff are, are basically not being entertained the way they should. So they are wanting things to happen. They want some sort of a change. But whether it's going to be more clubs in the Premier Division, I don't know. But, I mean, we already play each other four times in the Premier mm. Division. Mm. And I think it's just got to the stage where the people have had enough of it. They, we, they would rather see somebody playing each other twice as long as the games are important. Mm. What, what, what would you, um, or rather, what would your advice be? What, what, what are your thoughts on the subject? Uh, <clears throat> I don't know how really to put it, but I quite like the way that the Swiss do it, uh, the, the top division. They break into a half term, they get into... I switched maybe like if there's 14 clubs and the top seven would break away and they play for the championship and the other seven play for see who's going to stay in, in the top divisions. I quite like that format because then you can play each other twice to start with, break away and then I think most of the games then do become important mm. and I think at the moment there's too many games that mean nothing in our division and that's not good for the public. Well that's certainly not the case tonight, this one's vital for Motherwell on the bottom as we've seen and in real yeah, trouble. Billy Davis I'm arriving. Rob McKinnon, Charlie, yes? Yep. There's the keeper. Scott Howie. One Rangers. Does that say a lot about the two teams? Another well, you get the impression of drifting in. Rangers here, big time, big coach, big approach. Big time club with big ambitions, although they've won seven in a trot, they still are thriving for another opportunity to get back into the Champions League. That's where the money is, that's where the, all the prestige is, and that's where they want to be. OK, live Scottish football tonight, it's Motherwell against Rangers, kicks off at eight o'clock. Before we go any further, let's check out the form. Motherwell first.
Motherwell were out of Europe before the season even started. Defeat on the away goals ruled by the Finnish side MYPA was a bad start. Dougie Arnott got there first in the league, but they were held to an opening day draw after David Hagen equalised for Hearts. They beat Dundee United in the Coca-Cola Cup, but struggled for a point against Partick Thistle, having to rely on Nicky Walker's gift of an equaliser. It was hardly the ideal build-up for a trip to Celtic. This is O'Donnell, he gets away from Martin. Oh, that's a marvellous goal by Phil O'Donnell. He's fine getting a touch of Sandlitz. And Motherwell are back in this game. But four days later, they were out of the Coca-Cola Cup, despite going ahead against Aberdeen through Arnott. John Ingalls' extra-time winner put the Dons in the last four. The first league win came at the end of September. Kilmarnock were the victims, as last season's top scorer Tommy Coyne opened his account with two. The second, a penalty. Some hope then for a trip to Ibrox, but they were hit by Paul Gascoigne. Gascoigne going through a chance here to score, and it's a brilliant finish by Gascoigne. Good run by McSkimming, and ahead of them, it's a great goal by McSkimming. That was followed by a defeat at home to Wraith. David Sinclair sealed Motherwell's fate. But when Aberdeen came in mid-October, Motherwell got all three points and revenge for the Coca-Cola Cup defeat. Behind them, but with the great chance for Aberdeen. That's Deadly finishing. That was better, but Hibbs put four past them next time out. The pick of the goals from Keith Wright. And Michael O'Neill. A last minute defeat at Partick Thistle didn't help matters. Then Celtic made it five defeats in six, leaving Motherwell third bottom. McLeish picked himself against Kilmarnock, but he couldn't stop the rot, even after Alex Burns had put Motherwell ahead. It wasn't much consolation, but Ali Mitchell's equaliser was a great strike. Burns scored again against Falkirk, but it only earned another point. Hibbs were the next visitors to Fir Park. Missed by Keith Wright. That's all for the chance for Keith Wright this time. Hits it ahead. Holding off that chance from Keith Wakapich. The good ball in there's Keith Wright. The second for Hibbs. Now they were just one off the bottom. They lost again at Aberdeen. Duncan Shearer's goal completing the slide to the foot of the table. Alex McLeish never sank so low in an illustrious playing career. He couldn't pick a better night to start turning Motherwell's season around. To date then, played 17, won only twice. They've beaten Aberdeen and Kilmarnock. Lost seven, 14 points, scored only 13, and conceded 20. There's two wins coming at home, where they've been held three times and lost three only seven points from eight games played. Coyne, top goal scorer. This underlines really what Charlie was saying, with only three there. Arnott, two. Burns has got two. And Hendry, two. 
average attendance, just over six and a half, 16 booked and one sent off. And the last three league games, Drew with Falkirk won all, lost to Hibbs 2-0 and beaten by Aberdeen by a goal to nil. The manager, Alex McLeish, is with Davy Plop. Alec, let me ask you first of all about the changes that you've made to the training routine recently because we understand that the players have been putting in some extra hours. Well, it's not only recently, David, although it's emerged recently that, that we have been working at extra hours in the afternoons, but uh, we've been doing it for uh, a wee while now, gradually introducing it into the players' habits because for a long, long time it's been going home at lunch times. We, we wanted to implement it at the start of the season and we're going to gather a bit of momentum as far as that's concerned, but the players are quite happy to do it. Given the, the situation that the Motherwell players find themselves in at the moment, do you think they're finding it hard to relax and express themselves? I don't think there's any doubt about that. With the, the position and the pressure in the league, then it doesn't allow players to express themselves, as you rightly say. But you know what I will say is they're frustrated at the moment. Now, the heads aren't down. I wouldn't say the heads are down because they're making chances and they've missed a few. I hope we continue to do that tonight. We've just got to be more ruthless in front of goals. Now, the relegation area is unfamiliar territory to, to you. You're used to spending most of your, your time at the top end of the league as an Aberdeen player. Just how are you coping with this kind of pressure? Well, it's not a nice feeling. I'm not doing cartwheels about the situation, but there's a lot of points to be played for. And we've got a lot of players injured, a lot of key players injured. Players that have come in have done quite well for us. But, you know, when we were hampered by losing our captain for such a long time, and other key players such as Tommy Coyne, then it does take its toll, no, no matter the, the strength and depth you've got. Coyne in particular has been a very significant absentee. How quickly do you hope to have him back in a Motherwell jersey? Well, it's really just a case of Tommy saying to me, I'm OK, Gaffer, I can play again. I'm ready to play and we'll step up the training programme. He's training at the moment. He's struggling a wee bit kicking the ball. He's still feeling a bit of pain in his knee, but he's feeling very strong in the running, so maybe not too far away. Good luck, Alec. Enjoy the game. Thanks, Stevie. Mm, young manager, of course, whom you've played with at Aberdeen. Is this his first real test at the moment? Yes, undoubtedly. Our last term, we had the manager before him was Tommy McLean. He'd done remarkably well, but he was a seasoned campaigner, very well organised, Tommy McLean. Alex came in, first, first go at it, and did well and got marvellous credit for it. This time, different pressure. But there's one guy who can handle pressure with a bit of humour, big Alex the type. Although that doesn't come across there. <laughs> No, well, he, he's getting a lot of pressure from his own supporters, so he's got to be particularly serious when he's talking about Motherwell's position at the moment. Anybody else would be, but you can bet your bottom dollar when he goes into that dressing room today, he'll be relaxing the atmosphere as much as he can. He'll, he'll, he'll last the pace, no problem. The fact that they're coming back in the afternoon and uh, putting two or three hours work in, it, it is, uh, although he says that's something he wanted to introduce at the start of the season, yeah. does, does that suggest... Uh, that they're having a go as a result of the form, that they're trying anything to change things around? No, I think it's, it's always been said, I think Andy Gray's a, a great believer of this also, is when you're, you're in trouble, there's, you, you look for a bit of luck, a bit mm. more luck than you've been getting, and then you've got to concentrate on hard work. And that's really the only thing that can get you out of it. There's no solution to the problem that Alec is facing. He simply knows that they're making chances, they ain't taking them. Lack of confidence, they need a little bit of luck and hard work, and then you get the benefits. Just two hundred thousand pounds to spend in the summer. Otherwise, it's, well, it's virtually the same personnel. That, that, but that underlines, yeah. I suppose, how difficult a job it is. Well, of course. I mean, last season he sold Phil O'Donnell to Celtic one point seven five million, and then this term he's he's, he's only spending like two hundred thousand pound. They've refurbed in the stadium, uh, done it well. But at the same time, when the team needs strengthened, Alec could do with, with strengthen it at times. And now, live tonight on Sky Sports, it's Motherwell against Rangers. Top, of course, by a point. Rangers. This their game in hand this evening. So they'll go into the Christmas period with the four, with the four should they win it. <laughs> As Charlie was saying, the Champions League is what they have their eye on. But Motherwell are desperate for points and will give nothing away cheaply tonight. Christmas Eve, Sky brings you Super Sunday Football, Leeds versus Manchester United. On the movie channel, James Bond. Brilliant. A view to a kill. That's incredibly dangerous. At eight on Sky Movies. I'm going to make a deal with you. An encore presentation, Mrs. Doubtfire. Hello! 
on Sky Sports. Merry Christmas, Frank Bruno. Then a Sky One special. Les Miserables 10 year anniversary concert. Christmas Eve. We've got it all wrapped up here on Sky. This Christmas, give him Gillette Sensor XL. With spring mounted twin blades and protective microfins, there's no better shave in the world. The best you can give, the best a man can get. You can't always give in to cold and flu. So to relieve all your cold and flu symptoms, Neurofen introduced Neurofen Cold and Flu. Oh, well, I'm the kind of light that likes to bend around. You can point me left or right or hang me upside down. Cause I'm the snake light. The totally snake flexible hands-free snake light, newly from Black & Decker. Millions of people who know about cold sore prevention know treating the tingle with antivirals of Virax cold sore cream means their cold sore may never appear. As a journalist, I'm on the go all day, so I need a hairspray I can rely on. I don't want to worry about how my hair looks. Styling used to make my hair look so unhealthy and dull. Then I found Pantene. Pantene's hairspray holds and protects your style on the outside, while the pro-vitamin nourishes the hair. Whatever happens, Pantene holds my style the way I like it, leaving my hair looking really healthy and shiny. It never lets me down. Pantene hairspray. Great hold and healthy looking hair. I'm going to <laughs> With Scotch cassettes and cool knee. Every year with a holiday. If you re-record, not fade away. Re-record, not fade away. Re-record, not fade away. Re-record, not fade away. Win a holiday every year for life with Scotch Cassettes. A Disney video is one gift that'll be enjoyed long after Christmas. With so much joy, magic and excitement, no wonder a child will choose to watch a Disney video time and time again. Disney videos. One Christmas present they'll want to open again and again. 12 cans of Stella, only £9.99. Oh, it ends to end this! Fresher drink stores. Magic! This Christmas, it's a Simpsons marathon. Great episode after great episode. All right. And none of them are turkey. Dear Lord, it's a demon bird. Over three hours of festive fun. Oh, oh, oh. The Simpsons marathon, Christmas Day on Sky One. I love Christmas so much. Following the Queen's speech. Go. Welcome back live tonight from the Bells Scottish Premier Division. It's Motherwell against Rangers. Motherwell languishing down the bottom, of course. Rangers top, but only by a point now. This is their game in hand tonight. We're heading, of course, towards the end of the year. A terrific sporting year that's been reflected on Sky Sports like this. And the Ryder Cup will be on Concord tonight. It's on its way back to Europe. performances, individual excellence, and the personalities that made the glory possible. Too fast, too good, and we'll check. Were captured on Sky Sports. Golf is on fire. Like never before. Classic moment after classic moment of unprecedented sporting achievement. And it doesn't stop there, as Sky's dedicated coverage of the world's top sporting events reaches new heights in 1996 with unrivaled action from the worlds of football. Cricket. Boxing. Super League. And the comprehensive sporting action that is Sky Sports. The more I see that, the more I realize this really is the home of sport now. Sky Sports, 
and watch out for telephone numbers coming up in the new year when you can have your say about our Champions of Sport awards. As far as the football goes over Christmas and the new year, we've got some great action coming up. Christmas Eve at 11 a.m., don't be late, Leeds United against Manchester United, live from Allen Road. A football special on Boxing Day, 7.30, Blackburn against Manchester City. Just the start of it. Wednesday, December the 27th at 5.30. That's not bad either, is it? Manchester United against Newcastle United from Old Trafford. And that's followed by Bolton against Leeds. Monday night football, next Monday, 5.30 again. New Year's Day, of course, 5.30. Middlesbrough against Aston Villa from the Riverside Stadium. And that's followed by Tottenham against Manchester United. Second and third right now, of course, those two. Tuesday, January the 2nd, it's Queen's Park Rangers against Chelsea. And starting on January the 3rd, we've got this from Scotland. further ahead of course but what are you doing over Christmas and the new year watching football I will be watching football unfortunately I'm playing football <laughs> oh, of course but, yes uh, from time to time yes I'd forgotten that. I must admit there's some tremendous Fantastic games coming lineup, up I mean, Manchester United involved in three games every Tottenham Newcastle big games as well for United, Manchester United absolutely enormous games for Manchester United as well as the championship itself but the Scottish games also some absolute corkers mm, I think we've got the last two old firm games as well live between now and the end of the season well, both of which could be hugely significant massively important January's always been the month for me which tells if somebody's going to make that that little gap uh, and January's a very important month for Rangers Celtic mm, Easter comes around and we're saying well it, is this the period um, we're always talking about it over Christmas and the new year of course because the games come thick and fast yeah. at this time don't they well they do this I think this is more important time in England than it is in Scotland because, I mean, we are, we are down to two teams trying to win the championship in Scotland, whereas in England you've got the choice of still seven or eight yet. Mm -hmm. Terrific uh, festive period that we have to look forward to. And tonight, of course, we're live at Fir Park, Motherwell against Rangers. We've seen how Motherwell have been getting on. Let's check out Rangers now. They opened in the league at home to Kilmarnock. With the chance for McCoy, and it's McCall! They scraped through in the Coca-Cola Cup against Sterling, then put four past Wraith Rovers. McCoist getting two. After a defeat in Europe by Stoyer Bucharest, Rangers went to Falkirk. Oleg Solenko got his first for the club in a 2-0 win. The first Old Firm meeting of the season came in the quarter-finals of the Coca-Cola Cup. Super Alley stole the show. That's going. Great chance there! 